My name is Chinmiu. I'm from the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, now known as Vancouver. And I have a show on right now at Toronto Metropolitan University's Image Centre. Every year there is a, the Scotiabank Photography Award that is being awarded to a Canadian photographer. And the Image Centre uh, presents a, an exhibition in the context of that award. It's an artist-centric prize, which means we collaborate closely with the artist to make sure that the exhibition reflects what the artist needs at that time. It was a thrill to win the Scotiabank Photo Award. I have to say, I was absolutely delighted. The fact that it also comes with the Steidl Scotiabank Photo Award book. Those two in combination, I think, is so important because that gives you a platform in the world. And uh, because I'm from the West Coast and Vancouver, this is my first solo show in Toronto. So it means a lot to me and I'm so happy to share my work from the well-known Group of 67, which a lot of people know about but haven't seen, as well as my latest work that is hard for me to articulate exactly what it's about. But I know it does touch on the times that we went through during the pandemic and what we're still living through in terms of some of its consequences. The exhibition is divided in two parts and situated in two different galleries. So in the main gallery, we only have photographic works, mostly large scale color prints. When you come into the main gallery, the older work is at the back. Work that I just printed reach you, Oasis, Time, You Again, that I uh, made in Nagoya. It's a kind of vision of the future, of our rise and a continual striving for this elusive, perfect future, which drives modernity, you know, kind of in terms of progress. And we're still obsessed with that vision, whether we recognize it or not. In the IMC exhibition, you'll see references to the Taichu masks, which are a kind of mask drama that were performed by uh, often people that were um, so-called commoners or peasants as a form of resilience to the dominant orders. So it's a way to satirize the, the people who have power in society. And it's also really funny. It's very body-based and uh, I put those masks in relation to the emojis, thinking about how often we use emojis to uh, infuse our, our texts or um, emails or messages uh, with a kind of emotional tenor or something that gives you a little bit more nuance. And then to mash them up together to see what comes out of that, to think about our contemporary moment in various ways that are open-ended and specific according to the site that I chose. Go into the next room, and that's kind of, for me, the pandemic room. That room contains a conversation about what have we just passed through and where are we going to as well. And then you get to the back room where the oldest work lives. And that, that it's kind of my anchor because it was the community that I grew up with in Vancouver. And many of the elders have passed that was made in 1996, and then a response to a way of thinking about where we landed and that unceded lands of the Squamish, and the Musqueam, and the Tsleil-Waututh people. And becoming Crane, when you see that, that's shot on Tsleil-Waututh land with a kind of industrial site behind it. So these questions all interconnect and you'll see another image listening place is the title of the work under the Broad Street Bridge and that's me with hereditary chief Bill Williams and his son Mark Williams and my mother and my daughter and we're under the bridge where um, Senok the Squamish village was basically burnt down to make way for uh, development and Chief Bill's family um, he tells me the story of what happened at that site. And then being one of the main negotiators to get the land back. So that, that's very important to hear the story of dispossession and also reparation on site under that bridge. 
so that that is very different than um, thinking about what I was paying attention to in 1996 when I made a group of 67 and then you'll see a new work called honoring a group of 67 with my parents names because I wanted to highlight the fact that all the 67 people are actually individuals we're not one glom and that impulse came from experiencing terrible racism against East Asian peoples during the pandemic, personally and in my family and my community. And so for me, you see another kind of conversation happening that really arises from the contemporary moment. And then the university gallery is more about the conditions of war and our current situation with thinking very much with the Ukrainian people. So it's a very contemporary show that touches on those things uh, in an interconnected, interwoven way, in an entangled way, rather than pulled apart as if things are separate. They are not. The exhibition comes with a, a book, uh, which is more than a simple catalog. It's a, it's a book with pretty much every series she has ever produced in photography, but also there are film stills of her video work. So the book is extremely interesting because you do have a lot of images that reflect her career, but you also have different essays that kind of contextualize the work or interpret the work. Well, there's a couple of things I'd like to say about, you know, how to view contemporary art or how to approach it if, if people aren't familiar. And I think it's just openness. You just have to open yourself up to it and be curious. I think curiosity is number one most important thing and that you engage. You gotta put something back. You know, you can't just ask the art to give you everything. It's like a relationship. So I'd say just don't be intimidated. Go in there, have courage and curiosity. And that's the two things that are important in any aspect of life.